Do you want to get more watch time, views, subscribers, and make a deeper connection with your target audience? Here's the watch page of my live stream before I go live. Here's my scheduled live stream that's being recommended on the home screen of somebody else's channel. It's being promoted on youtube.com even before I go live. Here's me going live from my computer. Here's my live stream video currently ranking on the first page of YouTube after I've finished going live. Here's where the video appears in YouTube Studio. Here are the top traffic source types for my live stream video. Today, you'll learn how to live stream on YouTube without 1,000 subscribers or installing any software. Hi, my name's Herman Drost. If you want to grow your audience on YouTube and generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot, hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you're notified every time I upload new content. Step one, check that your channel is enabled for live streaming. Log into YouTube channel, click on settings, click on channel status and features. As you can see here, live streaming has been enabled for this channel. If your channel hasn't been enabled for live streaming, it means that you haven't verified your YouTube account. You'll be asked to enter a phone number, then YouTube will send you a verification code by text or voicemail to that number. After your channel has been verified, you'll be able to go live within 24 hours. Just click on the camera icon at the top of the page where it says create a video or post. Click go live, enter a title for your video, put test, select your privacy settings. You can select public, unlisted or private. If you select unlisted, anyone with a link can view it. You can also schedule the live stream by checking this box here. Choose your day, month and the time. Then check if your video is made for kids, this is required. So in this case, it's not made for kids, so I'm going to check that. Do you want to restrict this video to an adult audience? I'm going to select no, don't restrict my video to viewers over 18 only. I can also select more options. I can also put my description in here. I can select my category. So in this case, I'm going to do people and blogs. I can select my camera. It's my webcam. Select my mic, which in this case is the blue snowball. I can select a internal microphone and if I click advanced settings I can allow chat or not allow chat and I can select this video contains paid promotions such as paid product placement sponsorships or endorsements well it doesn't so I'm going to leave that off click the link in the description to download my live streaming checklist click next I can smile for a thumbnail here I can edit the stream metadata so I can edit the description, the title, privacy settings, etc. Click go live. It says going live. So at the top we've got live. I've got the timer. I've got the number of people that are on the live stream. And then I've got also the number of likes. If somebody's on the live stream, then the comments will appear here in the live chat. So if I add a comment, how are you doing? As you can see, the comments appear here on the right. And I can also filter the comments I can remove it and down the bottom here I've got the uh, microphone I can mute the microphone I can also share my live stream with other people on social media so I got Facebook Twitter blogger Pinterest LinkedIn etc after you finish the live stream just click end stream are you sure you want to end your stream click end it says the stream is finished has a number of playbacks has a duration Peak concurrence, total watch time, if any new subscribers have joined, and the average watch time. Also has the option to edit in the studio. Let's check where the stream appears. If I log into my dashboard and go to videos, click on live, you can see my live stream test appears right here. And here's my live stream. Here's some things you need to do before you go live. Number one, prepare your topic and content. I simply create a series of bullet points in a Google Doc on a topic that my audience is interested in. I then prepare a series of slides and graphics and keynotes so I can stay on track during my presentation. Number two, set up your live streaming watch page. Your live stream watch page, if optimized correctly, will appear as a recommended video on the home screen of your subscribers feed. So make sure you optimize the title, description, and tags for your live stream watch page. Make sure you also upload an eye-catching thumbnail so it can clearly be seen in the search engines. It'll appear on the home screen for people that have subscribed to your channel, suggested videos, and even in YouTube search. Number three, 
share your streaming link at least 48 hours before you go live. You can send an email notification or post it on your social media sites. Here's what to do during a live stream. Start off with a great hook instead of greeting your viewers at the beginning of your live stream. You have to keep in mind people watching the replay so they want to get the content right away. Your hook can be a question or introducing the content about what they're going to receive. Number two, introduce yourself and your channel. Let people know who you are, what your channel's about, and why they should subscribe, because many people on the live stream are probably new. Number three, greet your viewers. People like to be acknowledged when they spend time on your live stream, so make sure you greet them at the beginning of your presentation. Number four, ask viewers to ask their questions at the end of your presentation. Sometimes I invite viewers to ask their questions during the presentation if they're related to the content that I'm sharing. Number five, present your content. While I'm presenting content, I try to move between the slides and myself talking to mix up the content of the video. Remind people to like the live stream so you can get some interaction on your video. Sometimes I like to ask a question to the viewers while I'm presenting the content so I can mix it up a bit. This also encourages viewers to interact with your content while they're watching the live. Let me ask you a question. What's your biggest fear of going live on YouTube? Post your answer in the comments below. I'd love to read them and I'm sure others would too. Number six, call to action. After presenting your content, give a call to action such as recommending your products and services, liking your live stream, leaving a comment, or even asking suggestions for your next live. Here's what to do after you've gone live so you can get the maximum return on the investment. Number one, trim your video. You can use the YouTube video editor to trim the beginning, end, or even middle sections of your live stream. Click the link in the description to watch my video on how to trim an existing video on YouTube using the new YouTube video editor. You might want to trim out sections that may not be of interest to your viewers when they're watching the replay. Number two, add cards and end screens. If there's a particular topic where you want to go deeper but you didn't have time during the presentation, you can add a card or an end screen to the live stream. You can add an end screen to your live using the YouTube video editor. Number three, promote on social media. After you finish your live, promote it on social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. You can also add your live stream video to a playlist. For example, I created a playlist that contains all my live streams, then added it to the bottom of my YouTube channel homepage. Number four, add timestamps. Adding timestamps to the description below your video allow viewers to quickly skip to that particular section of your live stream. When someone clicks on the timestamp in the description, they immediately get taken to that particular section of your live stream. Number five, repurpose your live stream content. Extract snippets from your video content to use on your social media sites. I sometimes create a shorter, regular video that summarizes the content of my live stream, then link to my live stream video. You can also use the content from your live stream to create a video course. Instead of having one long video, you can chop up your content into different segments. You can also transcribe your video content and post it on your blog. But Herman, how do you go live from your mobile phone? I'm glad you asked. Just watch my next video on how to go live from your iPhone or Android device. Keep in mind you'll need 1,000 subscribers to go live from your mobile phone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.